All right, welcome back. Hope you're having a good day. It is very difficult to get this entire tree in the picture without getting too much of the background clutter I have in the house here and everything. And that is because of the big sacrifice branch that it has on here. And I'm going to go ahead and take that off today. First, I'm just going to give you guys a look all the way around. It is coming right out of the stump. I'll show you guys here in a second when we get up a little bit closer. Uh, just give you the look all the way around there. But with these Brazilian rain trees, they get such long shoots. And, you know, obviously here with the sacrifice branch, this is a lot of foliage for this little pot to be kind of holding on to for the whole day, if you will. And then plus it's just uh, right now, our rainy season isn't quite kicking in just yet. Rain for a few days last week, but then it stopped again. And now it's just been hot and windy. And I don't know if you can tell that these leaves are folded up. A lot of people think you need to uh, water the tree right away when the leaves fold up. My opinion, it just kind of rests when it's not actively growing. It's obviously healthy by all the growth that it has. But this tree is to the point of where I'd need to water it twice a day or go ahead and cut it back and everything. So I'm, I'm going to cut back the sacrifice branch, probably lightly prune everywhere else. It's a shame because it's got a hell, a hell of a lot of energy built into it. I'll even show you when I cut the sacrifice branch off that it's got uh, branches coming. It's back budding off of the sacrifice branch right now and it's getting ready to bloom again. It's already bloomed a couple times this year. It's time. I repotted it just before the hurricane, which was two years ago in October. It's actually August, uh, just before the hurricane when I, uh, when I did that. And it got knocked around quite a bit, just like everything else I've had. It dug all the substrate out of the top and kind of almost bare rooted the top of it. Again, I'll show you guys that when I get to uh, repotting it, I can get a much closer look for you guys. But I did sprinkle some topsoil, not topsoil, but potting soil on top of that just because it seemed to kind of dig all everything out and it just left just the larger size, uh, you know, the lava rocks and things like that and everything. At first I thought that was going to be a big mistake, but it actually seems to have kind of worked out for it for so far. But like I said, at this point, it's, uh, I already have quite an elaborate setup out there to keep it from toppling over with the wind. And it's, it's already getting to a point where I've got to do something with it. I've got to cut it back something or, you know, getting even more library set up out there and I'm not really trying to do all that much. It is just a, uh, it's basically a cutting. It's an air layer that I had that I thought had failed. And then I went and I, I went to go cut the air layer off and just kind of give up on it. And I realized, uh, that it had some life in it. So, uh, well, I'm turning it into this. I've already taken a couple of, uh, or a root cutting off of it. I would take some of the sacrifice branch as, as cuttings. But right now I've got five of these guys, and with the thorns and the room they take up, I think that's kind of my limit on them. I don't really need any more right now. So I am going to, said it is coming right out of the stump. My concave cutters are almost too small for the size of it right at the stump. So I'm going to cut it off of it just a little bit, and then when I repot, I'll think about taking the knob cutters and hitting it. Or I just might even just leave that room for a little bit of dieback. Rain trees are kind of famous for some dieback, and since it's so close to the stump, maybe I'll just let that fade on back, and then maybe it'll just kind of grow enough to where it really doesn't have any dieback. All right. Right at the edge of, just show you uh, in comparison there, right at the edge of being too thick for the, uh, for the concave cutters that I have. I have a, one of the smallest pairs. But I did want to show you, let's find a good spot here. All right, and then, then right there above my finger, you can see a little bud there. Most of them, most of the buds, that's a bud that's going to, that would, would be a flower if I let it go. Just realized that most of the buds on there are so small, it was hard for me to really show you on camera what they look like. And then even this, this is a branch off the sacrifice branch. And you can see that it's actually getting 
growth out of each one of those nodes there. And like I said, sometimes it'll seem like a shame that I'm cutting off that growth, but in a way, all of that energy, and that is a perfect time to go ahead and repot it. When tropicals have a lot of energy, they should recover from that repot really quickly. So, all right, and now with that thing off there, I can give you guys a little bit of a closer look. You'll get an even closer look once I start repotting it. I am gonna leave this as the next sacrifice branch, if you will. That sacrifice branch was below it. See below it, like right there. And again, you'll get a closer up look at that when I go to repot it. And then this one just kind of sprouted up and it really isn't part of what I'm thinking the final design is gonna be. Final design, I'm gonna to try to keep this one a clip and grow and really just kind of grow it out as a mature looking, I don't know what kind of a style, probably not really any kind of a special kind of bonsai style, if you will but just a mature looking tree with a thicker, more mature trunk than most of my other brain trees as, except for the mother tree, they all came from cuttings. Before I go into repot mode here, I am gonna just try to cut it back a little. The uh, last time I cut everything was back to here and here you can see right here and then this little branch coming off. You can tell some of these spots, like even right here, all the new growth is only about that long really small buds there where you can see it's about to bloom. Worried about leaving too much foliage off and on it for the repot, but again, remember I did just take off that huge branch and it had a lot of growth on there. So I'm gonna leave some of the really short stuff, but I would like to cut back some of these longer shoots. And actually, I guess, just to kind of keep everything in about the same, I will cut a couple of the smaller ones off. All right, I think that's all the fanfare for the trimming there. All right, and now you guys can probably see a little more of what I was talking about. The hurricane kind of exposed those roots there when I had sprinkled the potting soil on top of the good substrate. At first, it even had all that covered up. And then throughout time, the you know, the, the particles of the potting soil have kind of drifted into the, uh, the better substrate. And so it's probably actually made it a little bit better for the watering, watering situation too. And then now, now that we're a little bit closer up as well, there's a little chunk of dead wood here. Used to be a much bigger piece. And that was actually the, you know, the spot. I mean, the spot I tried to air layer wasn't, you know, the stump, but that was the foliage that was left on that air layer. And then when it sprang back to life, these were all these other little spots there. That's why, you know, everything's, everything from the sacrifice branch up is really just kind of coming from that one spot. So it never really looked like anything all that traditional. It looked like a big knob there, but that is the way a lot of tropical trees look, quote unquote, in the wild. And I do try to make my, uh, my bonsai look like a tree, not try to make my tree look like a bonsai, so. Totally expecting, I mean, I've repotted several of these trees. I'm totally expecting nothing but a big wad of spaghetti roots, which would be good. And that's what we've got. Sacrifice branch was here. Pretty funny looking at the roots there compared to the other side. But all in there pretty much. But definitely good, nice, white, healthy roots. You know, some of my smaller trees, I always get suggestions to get a root hook. I do have a root hook. It's just most of the time, if the tree's small enough where I don't need it, I'm going to really use it. I 
think if, if you could go back, if I could go back in time and if I would have had this in my garage for the hurricane and not had that damage happen, this probably, you know, well, this would have been all good substrate. I never would have mixed that potting soil in. And I think it would have fallen apart much easier as far as just getting in and getting to the roots and cleaning them up. All right, in the interest of the health of the tree and everything, I had to work kind of quick enough and not, uh, I couldn't really slow down enough to get a lot of it on camera, just simply, like I said, in the interest of the health of the tree, felt like it was drying out a little bit. So I went ahead and got it tied in. I used uh, some of the old substrate in the, uh, in the bottom. I took all the roots out, tried to separate out most of that dust from the potting soil that was in there. And then now, just kind of give you a little, before I finish uh, backfilling it here, show you where that sacrifice branch was. And just from the side there, and rain trees are known where when you prune them, they will die back a little bit. So rather than taking the knob cutters and trying to eliminate it, I'll go ahead and just leave it like that. And then on the other side here, that spot right there, which is healing over nicely, that's actually where I took off the root cutting. If you go back, I'll put... The link in the description, this will be in the Brazilian uh, tree playlist, but I'll also put the link in the description of when I last repotted it. I took that off and actually made another tree out of that. I'm going to go ahead and just use some of this other substrate on that side. I didn't realize how shallow I left that. And then just get some fresh stuff on top. You can see again those exposed roots. I also tied in the tree off camera. Use really flimsy wire. I can usually count on the roots kind of holding it in there once it gets going. So it's not in there super tight. And then All right, use my American chopstick here. All right, and I think it's looking pretty good. I have been doing some of my repottings in a couple Two parts, two parts kind of just to show that they've recovered. I have no doubt this guy's going to recover, but I do actually think I'm a little behind on my editing, so I may go ahead and give a quick update once this thing does start growing again. Try to catch it early in the morning before it gets its uh, sad wind-blown leaves again and everything. All right, so it has been four days since the repot, and I did go ahead and publish the video with me uh, pruning the other five, or I guess four, uh, rain trees and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and hold on to this one for a little while. But I just want, did want to kind of show it off. This is, uh, this is what it looked like the following morning. And it's looked like that ever since. Really starting to grow again. I'm actually going to put it back out in the sun either today or tomorrow. Tomorrow. 
I did also, one of the reasons I wanted to bring it in is I wanted to show it's already uh, starting to bloom a little bit. I mean, these buds were already on there when I repotted it, but I left a couple of them. Just uh, prune most of them off that sacrifice branch and everything, but I did want to show that off. I am getting ready to head out of town, so it might bloom and be done while I'm gone. And again, since I made that, uh, that other video, I'll just go ahead and hold on to this for a little bit. Maybe show how quickly this sacrifice branch takes off. All right, and now here we are a full two months later. I do believe it is now August 21st or 22nd. That first bit was uh, in the middle of June. And here is the branch I'm now going to kind of let grow out and hope that it contributes to some taper. We had a tropical storm and I did have to kind of unexpectedly prune this. I probably would have went out and actually secured the tree a little bit better. But I was also in the process of kind of making an emergency trip up north. So I just had to kind of clip off some of the longer branches. And then when I got back from my emergency trip... I want to kind of even it up a little bit, which I'm going to do a little more now, and then I just kind of realized actually that here in that other, the beginning part here, a couple months ago when I took off the other sacrifice branch, this, interesting enough, sprouted under where that branch was. I'm going to try to show you guys a close-up look of it in here in a minute, just because I find it quite interesting. But I'm going to take... Hopefully I don't lose the balance too much because some of these little sprouts here, if you will, are kind of from where I had to prune it during that storm. And like I said, I just didn't really have the time to kind of care for it the way I really should have. But I do want, I do intend to allow the, or try to keep just a decent canopy here and then just let these other branches kind of grow. And now that I'm Done looking at that, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of I'm going to give you a little close up as to why I think this is so interesting, show you some of the bark flaking, and then we'll just go ahead and call this video done. All right, and there is where the branch was where that sacrifice was before. And just for some perspective, here is the new one I'm kind of growing there. But I was, you know, a little concerned about that healing up at the trunk. And when I noticed this new growth kind of coming off there, I figured I'd let it go and hope you know, that it would actually help heal that up, and it should, but it, at the same time, it's not going to heal it up as well as possible because it's not even coming out from the wound. It's actually coming out from under it, almost the stump. Never really seen this on any of my other rain trees. It is funny that this, you know, this was a, uh, a failed air layer or what I thought was a failed air layer. I, I didn't see any roots, but I just, I don't know, somehow or another, I felt like there was some life left in it, so I just kind of put it in some, uh, I treated it like a cutting, and then it took off. And it does just seem to get all these sprouts down lower. I've already, uh, you know, taken off half the stump and made like another cutting off of it. And then just while I've got it up here up close, I've been trying to, try to leave that there just so I can kind of show that is the beauty of these trees and why some people like them so much. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I like it so much. It's got the exfoliating bark. And of course, over time, that will gray up again, if you will. And then as it grows more, it'll peel off again and give that nice uh, white look under it, like immediately right when it peels. And it'll darken up over time. 